About a year and a half ago, I did a video uh, right up here that shows how to display fun and useful stuff on any screen in your house. I've been tweaking that code ever since and recently added a new trick I'm really excited about, so time for an update. Quick recap. Um, we use HTML tricks to allow your house to display what it knows on any web browser. Things like time and temperature, humidity, power use, um, weather forecast, recently spoken text. Run this on a local web server and display it on any web browser. If your screen doesn't have a web browser built in, slap on a $30 Raspberry Pi. Now the clever part of this setup is to dual purpose these displays. In addition to the house info, we share it with photos. And the new trick is we share it with videos. HTML5 allows you to jump to a specific time in a video, an MP4 formatted video. So we alternate between showing videos and photos. Uh, 30 second video clips. So I'm going to give a quick tour of a few screens in the house that show this. And then we'll do a screencast with a few more details. So over here we have my main workstation. It's a beautiful 40 inch display that I usually don't use for just displaying photos, but I'm showing off a little bit. Uh, we're running the Chrome browser here. Uh, looks like we're just transitioning uh, from a photo we'll see, yeah, to a video. A clip from St. Thomas, 2010. We're transitioning from where you can see the text from the house to where the video occludes that. So over here we have a $400 uh, Seuss Chromebook. It is set up in tent mode as a picture frame. It has a touch screen so I can show how you can touch to the right of the label here to scroll forward and to the left you can scroll backwards. Um, can also turn the sound on if you want to listen to the video. And we can scroll to any part in the video just by uh, tapping the timeline here. That's, that's our little puppy when we first, first got him. <laughs> yeah. That got, that got this doggy all excited. Here we have an Apple iPad running Safari. St. Thomas again. And scrolling through various pictures. Taking a hike down into the TV room. 65 inch TV with a $30 Chromecast puck, uh, attached. And we use a web browser on a computer elsewhere in the house to broadcast the Chrome tab to the TV. And on the piano I have an old Windows laptop I use for recording music. Uh, it has a touch screen with a stylus so we can go through photos with this guy. And up here in the kitchen we have a 55 inch TV with a $35 Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi dangle attached right back in there. And also attached to this guy, we have an inexpensive little, believe it or not, that's a full functioning keyboard. So if we see a video or something we want to scroll through photos or videos, we can do it with a tap of these little arrow keys. Over here, we've repurposed an old 22 inch display by adding a Chrome bit, a little computer on a stick. Hooking up to the HDMI port and adding a keyboard for optional control. Android of all kinds of sizes. A little five inch phone, a little seven inch pad, and uh, this is the 10 inch Nexus. So that's it. Now let's go to the screencast and we can demo that in more detail. So what we're showing here is how we share the screen with the photo and the information. The photo starts off small and translucent, grows big and opaque, and over a period of 30 seconds, eventually takes over the screen for a few seconds so you can see the photo in detail. And I can also use the cursor keys uh, or mouse if I, or fingers if I'm in a tablet to maximize the photo um, and display previous photos, go forward or backward in the list. 
and I can minimize the photos and get to the information in the background. What we're showing here is the time in the upper left, uh, power used, 504 watts, the thermostat set points, which are currently 90 degrees, and thermostat temperatures, which is currently 72 upstairs, 69 downstairs, O for off, H for heating, C for cooling. And using the wireless tags I did a video on a few months ago, we collect information on temperature and humidity around the house and outside. So here's upstairs, downstairs, outside. We have the weather forecast. This is the previous weather forecast I had collected from Yahoo using the JavaScript simple weather. It gives high and low temperature predictions as well as, well as um, short forecasts. But to get the more interesting data, when you're in a place like Alabama where it rains a lot, it's nice to know chance of rain and uh, how much precipitation is expected. Uh, that's what this data is. 20% chance of rain, but zero inches expected. I leave both these weather forecasts up because it's kind of in interesting to compare the two. Then we have a uh, text that's been recently spoken by the house. So in case you missed it, you can always look at a display and see what was spoken. Then in the background, we have power information presented here on a log curve. So you can see here we're at 500 watts, here at 569 watts. And you can see we peak here when the electric water heater comes on, 5100 watts. Then we also have the temperature and humidity for various places around the house. You can see it's warming up outside. It's currently at 72 degrees. Just use my arrow keys here and scroll through to we get to a video. Uh, there's a video from 1989. Minnesota, obviously not Alabama, we have snow. These last two numbers show that it's minute eight out of a 15 minute video. Let me look at a different video. Here's a birthday clip, minute three out of a four minute video. By default, it'll run for 30 seconds. If you find it really interesting, you can use your uh, keyboard controls or your fingers on a tablet to turn the sound on and rewind or just watch the whole clip. I'm having a lot more fun with these videos than I thought I would. Typically we get a two hour tape twice a year so you add that up over 30 years then you have a lot of video, video you're not going to see otherwise. This display will then just mix randomly photos and videos, try to give a kind of an equal mix of both, and you can weight it. Or if you want to see more fo photos or more videos, you can weight it accordingly. So the way that works is, let me pull up my Linux box here and I'll show you. I have a couple of Perl scripts that run that generate a uh, photo index. These are a list of all the photos we have. There's 86,000 of them. We have a video index which shows, what, 378 different videos. Some of them are just short little clips. Some of them cover a span of six months or a year over a two-hour tape. Then we take this index and we generate this one, which will list 30-second increments of each of those video clips. So you can see this 1985 tape. You see it's 27 minutes long, so it's going to have 30 second clips means we'll get 27 times two different entries. Some of these clips, tapes that are shorter, like uh, this one's only two minutes long. So we'll only get a couple clips from that. When we launch the web browser, it loads this file and the photo file and it randomizes them and picks out a couple hundred of each to show over a two hour period. And then it'll repeat that. So you'll see the same clip a couple of times in that two hour period, but in a random order. HTML will automatically reload so you'll get a fresh new set of clips every few hours. This is the HTML for this whole thing. You can see a lot of it's done with CSS style scripts that controls how you present the information on the screen. And then the rest is done with JavaScript. So we have a JavaScript here for the photos and videos, one for the forecast. We use push bullet to capture the text from the that the house is speaking. We use this plot JavaScript to do the rickshaw library, do those plots of data. Optionally, we have a camera one here that I can display a webcam in the corner of the screen. Container for each of these things, uh, speech, forecast, camera, etc. The JavaScripts are a little bit more involved. Here's the one that loads the photos and pictures. So these are the picture index and the photo index. And then we have code here that randomizes it and loads them up and gives them to the HTML parent to display. I'm not going to go over this in detail here. That's a little too geeky, but I will load this HTML and the JavaScript and CSS files up to GitHub and I'll post a link in the notes. You could run this from outside your house, but for videos in particular, it's not very bandwidth smart. I think we'll call it a wrap there for this month. Thanks for watching. See you next time.